Hello, my name is Pastor Amy Kinsley from St. John's Lutheran Church in Sacramento. We are so glad that you're joining us for our worship in place from wherever you are in the world. A special welcome to those of you who are joining us for the first time or are maybe uh, visiting more recently. Uh, the greatest gift that you can give us is for you to go to our website um, and you'll find there some tabs including the bulletin for the worship, uh, the worship service, and also a place where you can click on um, New to St. John's uh, and fill out a visitor form. You can leave your information so we can be in touch with you. You can sign up for our newsletter. Um, and you can also leave prayer requests there that um, we are glad to respond to. Um, and it gives you a way to be in touch with us as well. Um, we know that uh, you know, we've been at this now for uh, over 10 weeks, uh, sheltering in place and worshiping in place. And we hear um, the longing from those of you who have sent messages to us uh, for us to gather uh, back together in worship in some way. Um, we share that longing with you. We wish that um, we could all be here together in this space. Um, but we're really being cautious and um, considerate about how we do that. And so at St. John's, we've decided that um, at least through August uh, to September, um, we will be continuing to worship in place. However, we will be doing some new and creative ways uh, to, to gather together, perhaps outside or in different ways, um, if you go again to our website or to our social media, Facebook um, and Instagram, you'll be able to find out more information about that as it comes out. So please um, stay connected in those ways and you'll know um, about all the events that we have and the ways that we are gathering. One way that we do gather uh, in a live way is after the worship service. You're invited um, at 1015 on Sundays um, to join the pastors, the preacher and another person uh, for conversation about the sermon and about the text for the day. So again, welcome to Worship in Place. Jesus, in your death, we could easily feel alone. Grieved like the disciples, we long to see your face. But the Spirit has been sent to us, the Advocate, guiding us into all truth, comforting truths and challenging truths, maturing our faith. Your spirit is present in our, our community gathered. We see your face in each other, and so we say, we believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated on the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Yeah. 
The grace of Jesus Christ, our Savior, the reconciling love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice in all times in your peace. Through Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Tout à coup, il vint du ciel un bruit comme celui d'un vent impétueux, et il remplit toute la maison où ils étaient assis. Des langues, semblables à des langues de feu, leur apparurent, séparées les unes des autres, et se posèrent sur chacun d'eux. At silang lahat ay napuspos ng Espiritu Santo at nagsimulang magsalita ng iba't ibang wika ayon sa ipinagkaloob sa kanila ng Espiritu. May mga dibotong hudyo noon sa Jerusalem na nagmula sa bawat bansa sa buong mundo. Zhe shengin yi xiang, zhong ren dou lai zhi ji, ge ren ting jian men tu yong zhong ren de xiang tan shuo hua, 就真纳闷,都惊讶稀奇说,看啊,这说话的不都是加利利人吗? Phrygia dan Pamphylia, Mesir dan daerah-daerah Libya yang berkat, berdekatan dengan Kirene, pendatang-pendatang dari Roma, baik orang Yahudi maupun penganut agama Yahudi, orang Kreta dan orang Arab. Kita mendengar mereka berkata-kata dalam bahasa kita sendiri tentang perbuatan-perbuatan yang besar yang dilakukan Allah. Todos estaban asombrados y perplejos diciéndose unos a otros qué significa eso. Naye abra ni baba sekeda. Ni baba gramanti, batamide omwenge omusu. Naye Petero, bwe amiri na bali 11, nayo gele wa guru na baba gramanti abasajja ba Yudaya na batula mu Yesu mwe na. Mutegele kino, mutegele amatu Epigambo yangi. Kuruli lutuka, buli alisaba, ilinyari ya mukama, alilokoka. Parhalofe tasawuri shama, in mardan mas nista. Zira ke aitun saate noe sop hast. Balke, in hamon chiziz ke yu ile nabi gof. Faro prodigi su nel cielo, e segni giù sulla terra, sangue e fuoco, e vapore di fumo. Il sole sarà mutato in tenebre, e la luna in sangue, prima che venga il grande e glorioso giorno del Signore.
The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no Spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. At this time, I invite you to pause this worship uh, video and go to the link for the children's message. You can find that in the email that transmitted this service to you or go to our website and there you will find the children's message for Pentecost Sunday. Grace and peace to you this day from God, our loving parent, and from the one who calls the Spirit from his innermost being to flow into our hearts, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning, or good whatever time of the day you are viewing this. Our worshiping in place has now stretched to and through Easter Sunday, all of Easter season, through Ascension Sunday last Sunday, and wow, what a beautiful job our youth, our talented youth did with that worship experience on Youth Sunday. And now we have arrived at Pentecost, worshiping in place. Pentecost, another big festival that we are not spending worshiping in our beautiful sanctuary. And even though I love this sanctuary where I am filming this sermon from with Two others, Tim and Alessio, the only ones hearing this sermon live. I am very grateful that the Spirit of God chooses to dwell inside of us rather than cold stone buildings. It is the Spirit's choosing to inhabit you and me, no matter where we are or who we see looking back at us in the mirror. The image staring back at me often these days is a little wilder, often less shaved. I'm often in, shall we say, more casual clothing than you see me in right now. And I am often somewhere in between wondering and anxious in these difficult and bizarre times in which we live. But when I take another look, I trust that you, when you do the same, will see the Spirit peeking out from inside us. In terms of its central importance to the Christian faith, Pentecost, this high holy day, recognizes and celebrates the importance of the coming of the Holy Spirit. And it only trails Easter and Christmas in terms of importance in Christian theology. Now, Lutheran Christians are not really recognized for our over-the-top exuberance in celebrating the Holy Spirit. By and large, we have not been a hand-clapping, hand-raising, speak-in-tongues kind of people, although we do have some charismatic Lutherans in our midst who can teach us a thing or two about letting go and letting God. 
But I will say that Lutheran Christians do know a thing or two about celebrating major church holidays, most often in the choice of our apparel. Indeed, I will miss being up front in our sanctuary this Pentecost Sunday morning. Since you are at home, I will not be able to look out and see, if not quite a sea of bread, at least a great lake of it. One of our favorite things to ask at St. John's and a wonderful way to really start a meeting or a Bible study or a small group is to ask this question, where have you seen God at work in your life today? And I want you to take a moment right now and, and do just that. Where have you seen God at work in your life today? Now, maybe it's a little early and you'll have to fall back to what happened yesterday, but most of us, given a minute or two of reflection, can share an incident, a moment, small as it may be, of identifiable divine breakthrough. Indeed, when we ask this question, where have you seen God acting in your life today? We are training you to recognize that such a vision is possible, and our hope is that eventually you won't wait for us to suggest it, that you will begin to look for God's activity yourself. But I also want you to notice something else about this frequently asked St. John's question, where do you see God today? And that is just how presumptuous it is. The asking of that question presumes first that there is a God and you are a pretty churchy crowd, so I'm thinking you're going to allow that part of the equation to stand without too much of a fuss. Or, but perhaps the second presumption is even greater. For the question presupposes not only that there is a God, but that we can see God clearly enough to at least take a stab at describing what God is doing. Pretty presumptuous, really, but I love this question. And I am thankful for Pentecost, which gives us reason, beckons us, really, to risk an answer to what do you see, what do you sense, how do you perceive that God is active and involved in this life of yours following Jesus? After all, Pentecost is a wild and almost preposterous event. Some people looking onto it saw it differently than we have come to see it, the coming of the Spirit. Some people just saw a bunch of babbling drunkards. But that is not how others saw or heard it. This earliest of church events called Pentecost is the very first activity in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, because really chapter 1 just sets the stage, explains why Jesus, though raised from the dead, is no longer around his ascension, and finishes with some personnel housekeeping. They have to find a 12th apostle with Judas leaving the scene. And so they cast lots and they barely get Matthias on board when boom, the spirit shows up in the second chapter and it sounds first like a powerful windstorm and then like a United Nations general assembly with everyone all speaking at once. And if you had asked the apostles our question for the day, have you seen God at work in your life today? These early church members and witnesses would have described it this way. It looked like tongues of fire had broken, down, broken out and rested down on us. Crazy, I know, but that's what we saw. Pentecost is a gift. 
We are advised that God is active and involved in the world and that we are graced to be chosen by the Spirit to be vessels of divine grace and therefore available for God's divine purposes and priorities. Peter invokes the prophet Joel when he's trying to do his best to describe what he saw God doing active in his life that day, what he heard, saw, perceived, discerned, you pick the right verb. And in his effort, he decides that Joel, the prophet Joel's symbolic words were the best way to describe it, including this part I just love. Hear the symbolic language that often is our only stab at describing how God is at work. And I will show you portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. And this ending line and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. In all our efforts to describe and explain, it seems the coming of the Holy Spirit always has an elemental quality to it. It is as basic and fundamental as wind and fire and water, both describable and both so great it underlies everything. To me, the primary point of the Holy Spirit isn't about the specific gifts that we often so love to talk about, which are developed elsewhere in the scriptures by St. Paul and other apostles who enter the story at a later point and are really kind of categorizing all that sort of thing. Yes, there are hints that God's Spirit reverses the Tower of Babel confusion of humans, and that's interesting. The apostles receive power through the Spirit, true enough, But these are not the main point. The most important thing to remember about Pentecost is that the Spirit's mission joins that of God the Father and Jesus the Christ, this three-in-one understanding of God that Pentecost is key in helping us to see. The main point is that our God has come to save. Now today's gospel lesson adds on to this, and it's short and sweet, but it adds one more element for our consideration of Pentecost and our presumptuous belief that we can experience a sort of seeing of God's divine action in the world today. The gospel is from the seventh chapter of John. Jesus has gone with his disciples to another festival, this one the festival of booths, not the festival of Pentecost, which is the host event for what happens in the second chapter of Acts, and the reason today's High Holy Day in the Christian church is named Pentecost. Now, originally, the festival festival of booths, the one from the gospel, was a harvest festival, and it was one of the big three, along with Passover and Pentecost. It's kind of like how our Christian celebration of Pentecost is number three to Easter and Christmas. In Jesus' day, the Festival of Booths celebrated God's provision as the Hebrew people wandered the wilderness after escaping Pharaoh in in Egypt. Harvest is fundamentally about provision, after all. What I want you to remember in this wandering of the wilderness time is one particular story of the many stories that come to us from the book of Exodus and other parts of the Hebrew scriptures. In the wilderness, God directs Moses to strike a rock and water gushes up to sustain the Hebrew people in a moment of great need. At the former location of Pacific Lutheran Theological Seminary, when it was high up on the hill in the hills in Berkeley, on a beautiful campus that now is in other use, this statue that you see, the statue of Moses striking the rock, helped us see in artistic form this great 
event of wilderness wandering and that our God comes to save us. For you see, without water, we die. And without the Spirit, God's living water, we are cut off from our source and we are perishing on the vine. In the gospel, Jesus declares at the Festival of Booths, as he does in other places in the Gospel of John, that he is the source of living water. Let anyone who is thirsting come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. Jesus is a salvation source as elemental to us as water, wind, fire, all ways we have come to describe the Spirit, because from the source of saving grace, we are then made pools, gracious pools of the same. As the gospel declares, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now, Jesus said this about the Spirit, which believers in him were to receive. And so I ask you again this Pentecost morning, this most presumptuous question that Pentecost allows us to ask, Where have you seen God active today? May it be, or whether it is something big or small, may you see it as something as meaningful and powerful as rushing wind, refining fire, or cleansing and refreshing water. Look for Jesus' divine priorities, the Spirit's saving grace, May that be what flows out of your believer's heart and not your own self-interest. May we be graced with eyes to see that it is the Holy Spirit that inspires and empowers us to live a life of faith and a life that matters, a life following Jesus in his gracious, loving way. And may we be so bold as to name it when we see it. Amen. Dear God, the Spirit, Spirit of God, here we are once again to join with your people everywhere in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God who connects us all as never before, we find ourselves physically separated by space, location, caution, and fear. Remind us of the unity we always find in your Spirit. Thank you for the many different and unique gifts you give us. Thank you for your inspiration to use these gifts for each other. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. God, Spirit of Life, we feel your presence in air, wind, light breezes, and crashing storms. We experience you in our very breath. Today, as many struggle to breathe or sigh in the sadness of loss, we ask for your loving care. Touch us when we cannot touch each other. Hold us when we long to hold those we love. Make us sure of your presence each moment of our days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God, Spirit of Unity, hold us close when we may feel very divided. Searching for health, for justice, for right, it can seem that we only push each other farther apart. Soothe our pride. Help us to remember that we all are yours and we all belong to each other. Give us hearts to gently hear one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear God of healing, we need you now more than we ever may have understood. Please heal the bodies of all who suffer from COVID-19 and all other illnesses. Please heal the spirits of those who suffer financial loss and insecurity. Please heal the hearts of those who might wish to blame others. Please heal the souls of those who feel unheard, uncared for, or abandoned in any way. Today, we especially lift up Denny, Courtney, Carrie, Heidi, Dan, Stephanie, Jean, Kim, Ginny, Lena, Donna, Pear, Eliseo Sr., Miriam, Bill, Chuck, all our Stephen ministers and those receiving their spiritual companionship and those we each pray for individually now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, Spirit of Comfort, please be close to those who have experienced loss. We lift up to you Corinne Joe and family at the death of her husband, Stanley Joe. Chris Fernandez and Sarah Nave at the death of their mother, Sandra Fernandez and Jerry Pedersen and family at the death of his wife, Drew Pedersen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, spirit of friendship, remind us more than ever to reach out to friends. Thank you for the various virtual ways we can do that while protecting the health and safety of ourselves and each other. Help us to see you in the people you give to us. Today we are filled with love, gratitude, and fellowship as we say farewell and Godspeed to Tony Eastbrook. We are thankful for the generous part he has played in his time at St. John's. We are excited for what will come next for him, and we look forward to seeing him when he comes back to visit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, Spirit of hope, we know that you have led your creation through many challenges and that you have always held us close to you. Make our hearts and spirits confident in your love, guidance, and nurture. We trust that with you, we can live your love in the world. Amen.
The peace of Christ be with you and your household. We will now receive our tithes and offerings. If you are new to St. John's, uh, the greatest gift that you can give is to go to our website and find the tab that says New to St. John's and click on that link.
And let us pray. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at this table for service in your name, in the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life, you are the everlasting wellspring, you are the fire of rebirth. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for cloud and rain, for dew and snow. Your waters are below us, around us, above us. Our life is born in you. You are the fountain of resurrection. Praise to you for your saving waters. Noah and the animals survive the flood. Hagar discovers your well. The Israelites escape through the sea. And the Samaritan woman will never be thirsty again. Praise to you for the water of baptism and for your word that saves us in this sacrament. Breathe your spirit into all who are gathered and into all creation. Illumine our days, enliven our bones, dry our tears, wash away the sin within us, and drown the evil around us. Satisfy all our thirst with your living water, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We have gathered here in communion with you, O Christ, through this virtual portal of time and space. While we are not able to partake of the body and blood of Jesus in the sacrament, we join in prayer to express our longing in this time of fasting from communion. O Christ, I believe that you are present in the sacrament of Holy Communion. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you in the full sacrament, I invite you to come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Help me to remember that nothing in heaven or on earth can separate me from the love of God through you. Amen. Let us pray with the words that, are, that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. And Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Bless 
the faithful, may they flourish, strengthened by grace and Christ. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Share this good news and live God's love in the world.